So alright guys, today I'm going to be teaching you how to easily set up and locally run a ChatGPT instance on a Linux distribution. Now before we even get started, if you're wondering whether or not this works on Windows, well indeed yes, you can run this either through WSL or you can actually use the pre-compiled Windows EXE that's easily available. However, I want this to run in CLI on my Linux distribution, so how do we go about doing this? Well, to get started, I'm going to be using this uh, Llama Chat GPT program made by Quavis. Hopefully, I'm saying that correctly. This is mostly compiled in C, but there are other versions of Llama Chat GPT available that run in Python and various other programming languages. So, if you don't like this particular version, feel free to try out any of the other ones that are easily available. Now this is the version of the program I'm going to be using just because C++ comes with most Linux distributions so there's very little you're going to need to actually install in order to get this to work. The only thing I think you're going to really need to install at all is maybe get if it's not already installed on your system. But with that said, what do we need to get started? Well the first thing we need to do is get clone this repository. If we scroll down here on the wiki, the commands are already available, so I'm not going to need to show you how to do this. You can really just copy and paste. So what I'm going to do is open up a terminal. I'm going to navigate it to my uh, desktop real quick. And now that it's on the desktop, I'm just going to copy and paste this command. For those of you that don't know what get cloning is, it's essentially just downloading this repository. So what this command here does is it tells it to download this whole folder to well where I'm currently at, which is my desktop. The second command here just tells it to navigate right into the folder for us. As you can see that indeed did not take long and if you saw here our current directory has changed automatically. So what I'm going to do now is just clear my screen by hitting Control L or you could type in clear. This is just to make things a little bit easier for you guys to read. You don't really have to do that. Now what's next? The next step we need to do here is make a directory, cd into it, then run cmake to build the program. But if you run into any issues with this step at all, I recommend just running each of these individually, just like this, copy and pasting them one at a time and then running them. However, I'm just going to run all this at once since I know it works for me okay. Now there are some things to note though, the very last option here, there are some tweaks we can do to it to improve performance and to or make it run on lower end hardware. However, since this works fine on my current system, I'm just going to leave it as is. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste this whole command right into my terminal, then hit enter. Some things to note, C++ compiling can actually take some CPU and RAM usage and since I'm recording this video as well as the audio, it's probably going to take the program a fair bit of time to build this and compile it. So I'm going to pause the video here and I'll meet up with you guys when it is done. So alright, now that that is done, what do we need to do from here? Well, the hard part, believe it or not, is already over. All that's left to do is just to navigate to where the executable is located. In our current case, if you're following along from the terminal, all we need to do is just type in cd bin, then hit enter and we are there. However, if you're having any problems finding this directory at all, I'll show you what to do. Now, if you're having problems finding this executable via the terminal, just open up a new Windows. I'm using Dolphin to navigate the files uh, with the GUI. So all I got to do is just navigate into my build folder, then my bin folder, and the executable is right here. Now, if you're wondering, yes, since this is an executable now, we can actually move this wherever we wish. I'm going to move it to my desktop just because that's a lot easier for me to remember where it's at. Alright, now that I've done that, we need to of course navigate to the desktop or wherever it is you decided to move your executable to. From here, we're pretty much actually done. However, what I do want to say is if the program does run weird for you later on or indeed starts to have any issues, check out the notes section here before the building step. You can change some things before you compile this program, but I left mine as is and pretty much as default. But with that said, the main program's actually done, so all we need now is a learning model or a uh, bin file. 
Now the actual GitHub page here does reference a few of them. You can download the ones they have available right here, or you can navigate to this particular website called gpt4all.io. This will have more free available bins that you can actually use and run. Now if we go to that website, as you can see, this actually offers up a Windows download, so if you don't want to do what we just did here on Linux, you can just download an installer on Windows and get started. However, since we're not doing any of that and all we want are the models, I'm just going to scroll down on this web page till I find where the models are at so we can download them. So alright, now that I'm scrolled halfway down on the page, here is the model explorer. We can just click into it and pretty much download any model that we desire. Keep in mind some models are better at coding, some are better at just chatting, and some are just generally all around really good at everything. However, the better the model, the more RAM your computer will have to use to load the model, so keep that in mind. If you only have 12 gigabytes of RAM, you won't want to have a uh, bin file that's bigger than 12 gigabytes of RAM, so to say. It most likely won't work or it won't load at all. In my particular case, I'm going to be using either Snoozy or, well, Wizard. You may be asking why I'm choosing to use those two. Well, I believe it's because they're pretty good at Python programming. I could be wrong. It's been a while since I looked into it. However, all you got to do is just select the uh, bin you want, then click on the little download arrow here, and you can get started. However, I'm just going to hit stop on that because I have the bin files already downloaded. Now from here, all we got to do is type in dot slash chat and a dash m to specify our bin file path. In my particular case, since they're on another drive, I'm just going to open up a new window here and drag and drop them into my terminal, just because that's easier for me to do. But before I do so, like I said, the bin files rely on having RAM space available, and since I'm recording this video as well as the audio, I don't have that much RAM probably available, so I'm just going to be using the smallest bin file I got which is this GPT for all generic uh, bin. So all I gotta do is just drag and drop it into the terminal and we are pretty much good to go. As it stands, I can just hit enter and this will run. However, if you're CPU limited, there are a couple other steps we can do. You can type in dash T and then specify a thread count. If you're running a lower end CPU, I think you want to use something lower than what your CPU is. If you're running something pretty high end, you can actually raise this number up as high as you wish. By default, it runs it at 4, however, I'm going to lower it down to 2 because I'm recording video and audio and I don't want to use so much system resources that my computer just hard freezes. So we're going to run it at a thread count of 2 and I'm just going to hit enter. From here, as you can see, the model indeed is loading. It actually loaded fairly quickly because I had loaded it in earlier before this video just to make sure that the bin file I have is good to go. And if you're wondering, yes, this is locally hosted on my machine. If I were to disconnect from the internet, I can use ChatGPT just fine. It just won't learn as great. If I give it something that's not already in the data set, it won't really give me an answer. However, I believe this program does use internet as well, and you can turn that on or off if I'm not mistaken. But with that said, just to show that this works, I'm going to hit it with a simple question. Now depending on your CPU and RAM, it can take a while to process this. If we take a look at my CPU chart right here, we're all the way up to pretty much 99, almost 100% CPU usage just to generate this one answer. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this will take my system maybe less than a minute to a minute to actually give me what I want. And as I say that, it's done. But like I said, depending on your system, this can take you a really long time. I've ran ChatGPT on an i7 laptop without a GPU or without a lot of RAM, and it took probably about an hour to generate this response. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it for this video. However, before I go, I want to touch on the alternative commands and things that you can run for this program in order to enhance your experience. By default, this particular program has a pretty low uh, token count, 
And what token count is, if I'm not mistaken, it's been a while since I've looked into this, is how many lines of text it can generate back as a response. In this particular case, it generated a paragraph. However, if I gave it a tougher question and it needed to generate more than like three or four paragraphs, you'll notice that the paragraph will get cut off. So what this means is your token size isn't large enough, so you might want to increase it. It's as simple as just going back to the command and then typing in dash, I believe it's E, and then specifying a new number. If you want to know more about that, this uh, current GitHub repository actually explains it a lot better than I ever could. However, there are some alternative commands you can run while ChatGPT is running that I suggest you guys to look at. There is a save slash load state, so if you're starting something that you don't want to have it close out later and you want to load it back up and keep talking, you can indeed do that. However, from what I understand, this feature is currently broken as of making this video. Some other things you can do is you can turn off the animations, you can give it a random seed or a random prompt. What this means is whenever we run the program, it will automatically generate a question that it will answer itself. Or you can have a prompt which will actually just display a message whenever you load this up just to personalize it for your own taste instead of having all this pop up as it loads up. But yeah guys, that is pretty much it. Like I said, if you want to learn more about this program or get more in depth with it, check out the GitHub page. It will tell you how to do anything you pretty much want it to do. But with that said, I'm going to leave today's video off here. DTPK signing off. Peace. You can bathe with this thing just fine and you probably won't die. It's not one that has a... or this... or perhaps even this, using nothing more than a free program called EBSYNTH.